What a play, play after play after play. And there's the ball. Oh, yeah. There it is. He is wow. taking over. That's his filthy. There you go. The greatest conference in the country is showing out tonight, gentlemen. He's going upstairs with it, and that's going in. Your WCAC champions. I cannot believe it. That is the greatest Look at football this. football game. and honors the members of the class of 2003 in our basketball program. First, our managers. Welcome to the floor, Lauren Jackson. She is supported by her mom, Hope, her dad, her, and her cousin, Olivia Blackwell. She has been a manager on the varsity team for two years. Next year, we'll be attending either Howard, Towson, or Temple, where she will lead during sports management. Her favorite memory of Bishop McNamara are the road trips and bus rides to two and away from away games with teammates and best friends. Next, we have DeAngeli Thompson. She is escorted by her mother, Benita Schwartz, and her dad, Jason Schwartz. She has also spent two years on varsity and will be attending Temple University, where she will double major in dance and biology. Her favorite memory is talking and laughing for hours with her best friend and brother. And our final manager, Philip Holver. He is escorted by his parents, Philip and Ingram Holver, and his godparents, the Exum. This is his first year as team manager on varsity, and next year we'll be attending either Morehouse College, Temple University, North Carolina Central University, Hampton University, Winston-Salem State University, Alabama A&M, or Georgia State, where he will major in kinesiology. His favorite memory, hosting this year's homecoming dance. Our first player, number 21, playing shooting guard, Jaden Davis. Jaden, supported by his mom, Tammy, and his dad, Johnny, and his sister, Logan, and a whole lot of family. He has spent two years on varsity, and next year will be attending either Emory, Chicago, Brown, or Morehouse, where he will meet during creative writing. His favorite memory is going to Kairos as a peer minister. Next we have number 12, that guard, Jovari Smith. Yeah. Of, uh, was escorted by his mother, Jeanette Penix, and his father, Denard Smith. He will be attending either Norfolk State, Oregon State, or North Carolina Central currently undecided on his major. His favorite memory of Bishop McNamara is the team trip to Canada and the trip to Florida. Next we have number 15 at guard, Bruce Black. Supported by his mother, Jean, and his father, Eddie, and his grandma, Helen Aiken. This is his second year on the varsity team. Next year he will be attending on Morehouse, Virginia State, or Delaware State, where he will major in sports management or sports medicine. His favorite memory of Bishop McNamara is the 2001-2022 basketball season. Next we have at guard number five, Chase Lawton. Escorted by his mother, Keisha, his father, Emmanuel, and the rest of his family. 
This is his third year on varsity. Next year he will be attending either Alabama, Norfolk State, Widener University, or Morehouse, where he will major in either kinesiology or pre-physical therapy. His favorite memory of Bishop McNamara, the five overtime game at the Governor's Challenge. Then we have at point guard, number three, Jeremiah Quigley. Supported by his mother, Sandra, his father, Gil, his brother, Ronnie Jackson, and his grandmother, uh, Valerie Cromarty. This is his second year on varsity. Next year, he will be attending Harley Dickinson University. His major is undecided. His favorite memory is traveling to Canada. And finally, we bring out our point guard number 10, Jaden Johnson. Supported by his mother, Johnny, and his dad, and his dad, Johnny, and his mom, Jalika. This is his fourth year on varsity. He'll be attending either Coastal Carolina or New Jersey Institute of Technology, where he will major in sports management and real estate. His favorite memory is playing at Bishop McNamara with his boys and going to the championship. We thank all these exceptional student athletes for all they have done to continue the legacy of the men's basketball program here at McNamara. The work and sacrifice that they continually improve their skills and this team is truly appreciated. We wish you all the very best as you move on to the next level as players, students, and most importantly, as disciples with hope to bring. Thank you, class of 2023. Welcome to the campus of Bishop McNamara High School in Forestville, Maryland for a WCAC Washington Catholic Athletic Conference matchup on First Amendment sports. The Eagles of Gonzaga traveling to the home of the Mustangs. Lou Holder and Darren McClinton on the call. Darren, 222 and 16s battling for third place in that tough WCAC. Absolutely, they two teams with identical records both equally as strong, and they're all, I know their main goal is to vie for the championship, and somebody can uh, tip, tip off a, a very tough PVI team that has been running the table so far. So I know this is on their mind first, but in the back of their mind, they're trying to you know, catch St. John's and PVI, which are ahead of them in the stands. Always an emotional time, the senior night in the senior day, five seniors just being honored. You know, it kind of hits you now. These are the last of everything the last home game, the last WCAC tournament, then graduation. So it's, it's, it's an emotionally charged right from the beginning, and we'll see how um, uh, the, the, you know, the Mustangs handle it. It is. It, well, on the McNamara side, their leader, their point guard, is one of those seniors. So it'll be business as usual for him. And the other seniors, you know, they, they get a chance to uh, start and, and, and play some meaningful minutes early, early on in the game and we'll see how they can control their emotions and still get the job done. Now this Gonzaga team, I mean, they, they beat Bishop McNamara 75-40 on uh, January 10th. So, um, you know, they, they, they know how to play Bishop McNamara, but then again, both these teams are 22-6, and six, and um, they know how to play. They know how to play each other. Yeah, that, that was a different, different team, both physically and because uh, their main guy Quigley was out yes. that game and now he's back and he's strong as ever so uh, I look forward to be a, a much closer match tonight mm -hmm. and um, let's see how let's see whether the emotions of the senior senior night or senior day that is 
can uh, charge these McNamara Mustangs. Now Bishop McNamara has won three of their last four, and they lost the last time out to St. John's, 75 to 67. Uh, they're eight and two at home. They're yes. eight and two at home, so Bishop McNamara, this is the friendly confines of Bishop McNamara High School for this team that uh, plays well. All right, let's check out. Thank you so much for a couple of our sponsors who help us be on the air. Best Loan Choice. Best Loan Choice shops hundreds of mortgage rates to find you the best rate. Visit them at bestloanchoice.com and find out what you qualify for and what you can save. Also, make sure you see if they can advise you on down payment assistance if you are a first-time buyer. Certified title nationwide. Transaction enterprise solutions protect what matters most to you and your family. From cybersecurity to all to best practices, they've got you covered for the home buying and selling process. Visit their website, certifiedtitlecorp.com. Kyle Sterling Properties was founded in 2019 with the mission of inspiring, inspiring people, innovating communities, and impacting the next generation. Proudly serving D.C., Maryland, Virginia areas, they help people of all walks of life find their dream home. Sell a property or invest in the real estate market. Visit KyleSterlingProperties.com to get started with them today. So thank you for those three sponsors. And pleasure to be here with you, my brother. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a nice, you got nice weather. We got a nice atmosphere on the inside. I don't know where winter went. <laughs> I don't know where winter went. I think we're going to get hit later. I think we're going to get, I think we're going to, I think we're going to be in for some March madness. That's what I think. It, it always <laughs> is this time of year. So I don't expect anything less. Two, two teams that are amped up and charged up to make a playoff run. Yeah. And uh, this is going to be a kind of a preamble to what we're going to see next weekend when the WCAC tournament starts. Marty Keithline and uh, Steve Turner, two great coaches. Uh, Marty Keithline went all the way to the final last year. That was a very, very uh, charged up game. And Steve Turner, what can you say about him? 24 year, 24th year, uh, five as an assistant, 19 as the head coach, four WCAC titles, Washington Post, all met coach of the year, national Gatorade coach of the year. I mean, this is just great, great coaching, great, great students. Great, great atmosphere. Like you said, Lou, these coaches are as good as they get. And and Steve, he's a good longtime friend of mine. He just got uh, appointed one of the coaches to the um, Hoop Summit. So kudos to Steve for that. He's getting recognized for his great coaching ability. Yeah. Yeah, there's, um, there's good coaches all over. And I'll mention this a lot more. I mean, the WCAC... It's just unbelievable with talent, you know. Jay Wright, the um, the coach of Villanova, the former coach of Villanova, said that the DMV is the most fertile, rich ground for recruiting in the entire country. This is a coach of Villanova who's come down here, gotten players out of here, and he mentioned that the, the players, the families, and the schools make this bar none, the best area in the country for recruiting. And we're seeing, you know, we're seeing it right here. Integral parts in his national championship runs yes. come from the DMV. So the proof is in the pudding, Lou. Doesn't just fit on the men's side, the women's side too. Gino, Gino Oriem has come down here, got AZ Fudd, just got Caden Samuels. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's, it's, they know where to come. <laughs> you just come here, you're going to get something off the trip. Thank you for the gift of life which we abundantly enjoy this evening. May our cheers be a song of praise and thanksgiving for all the many blessings you have bestowed on us. And may all the efforts made this afternoon be offered for the glory of the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing as our pep band plays our national anthem.
Welcome again back to the campus of Bishop McNamara High School in Forestville, Maryland. Lou Holder and Darren McClinton on the call for a very, very exciting afternoon of basketball ahead. A senior day for the Mustangs as the WCAC tournament is getting ready to commence next week. Next week. Yep. As Gonzaga's getting introduced, we look at the uh, starting lineup. Who are you looking for to, to, um, to cement themselves? Sable, Dixon, Lewis, Badis, and Tomo. Now, Nick Lewis, number yep. five, the yep. sophomore All-American point guard, is the, is the, he's the straw that stirs the drink for, for Gonzaga. Uh -huh. Very, very athletic, heady, and he, he gets things going for them, both offensively and defensively. We got Thomas Batiz, who's the chairman of the boards for them. He leads them in rebound, about seven rebounds a game. He's headed to Harvard. Very impressive young man. He's headed to uh, Harvard next year. And uh, they, they're just fully loaded. Dixon can really, really fill it up. So can Ryan Sable. And Ryan Sable's still undecided. I'm not so sure why, because he's a very underrated player. He's very, very good player. Can get hot. And, and then, we, the, then we go the to Bishop McNamara side. Yeah, McNamara. you got Quigley, Lawton, Johnson, Smith, and Black. You got something very interesting to tell us about what's going to happen with Jaden Johnson uh, at the Absolutely. beginning of this game. The 6'2", powerfully built Jaden Johnson, yeah. number ten. He uh, had a foot injury and had surgery, which uh, cost him this season. And he's just recovering from it. He's not clear to play yet, so they're going to let him get a, uh, a layup, and then Gonzaga will get a layup and then we'll start the game as, as normal. As you see, he gets a big hug from uh, Coach Turner. It's it's uh, unfortunate about the injury that, that Jaden Johnson got because he was a very highly touted and, and, and very highly recruited player as a youngster. Yeah, he's been he's a four-year varsity player. He came, burst onto the scene as a ninth grader and just played lights out. And uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a big blow for, for McNamara's um, squad that he got that injury yeah. and he can't help him here tonight well, but like they're going to give him his layup to start yeah, the I like game that off. sportsmanship that's what it's all about you know we, we 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 miss that a lot you know in sports the good sportsmanship every now and then you see that in soccer you know when there's a foul they'll kick the ball back to the other area so they can just reset it and have you know the other team can have uh the play so can't do that much in football you don't see people hey let me throw an interception and you throw an interception and <laughs> right start all over again right but this to let him have a layup i mean you know what we're about to see is what makes high school sports and scholastic sports you know what it is absolutely and the good thing about this area it's so talent rich and these guys play against each other as yeah. as they do the layup there Two for one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jaden. Jaden and then Gonzaga will come down and get a layup right. on this side. And let's play ball. Good. It's great to see. Great, great, great to sportsmanship see. here on First Amendment Sports. Again, Lou Holder, Darren McClinton on the call from the home of Bishop McNamara High School in Forestville, Maryland, for these two 22 and six teams. Identical records overall, identical records in the conference. Um, and they're both looking up at Paul VI, the best teams in the country, and um, St. John's. It's a lot at stake here this afternoon. You, we're going to see action wire to wire. Yeah. Yeah. Quickly. As expected. And quickly driving. And rejected, and here come the Eagles. Great defense by Bishop McNamara. This two, game is going to get physical, Lou. 2-2 two, two early on here. Both teams know what's at stake. Gonzaga. That's Thomas Batiste. With the first. Thomas is their inside force. Quigley. Just lost. Turnover for Bishop McNamara, and here come the Eagles. Really it. nice left-hand pass by Derek Dixon right there. Alex to Omo. To Omo. Here comes Bishop McNamara in the front court. It's Bruce Black. 
over to Quigley. Quigley, double teams. Quigley looking to drive to the lane. Nice bucket by Jeremiah Quigley. You're gonna hear this name all evening long because he's the guy that gets them going. Right now, McNamara looks a little bit uneasy because they're starting some guys that don't usually don't usually start because they're seniors. But Quigley is the guy to calm them down and get them get them into their stuff. There's a foul on the floor. Let's take a look at Quigley knifing in for the bucket. Very crafty with the basketball. No stage is too big for Quigley. He plays high, high level AAU basketball with team takeover. So the lights are never too bright for that young man. Alex to Almo. And here come the, the regular players who said that, you know, it was a senior. Some seniors were in there. A little helter skelter to begin with, but now this is more traditional Bishop McNamara um, starters. The 6'6 junior, Lugard Edopai, just checked into the game, yeah. taking the ball out now. I was talking to uh, assistant coach Jay Gavin, and he said that he's coming off of a, a monster game. He's, he's very relentless on the boards, still a little bit raw, but he's coming into his own, which they're very excited about. Quigley, Quigley looking inside. Ed Opai coming out to set the pick. Quigley trying to knife again and throws it away. They walk on the floor. As you can see, Gonzaga is very, very concerned about where tagging uh, Quigley, where he is on the court and trying to get the ball out of his hands. As you can see, they're double teaming, they're blitzing those ball screens. They do not want him knifing through their defense. Quigley again with the ball. Off to Martin Somerville. Martin Somerville driving. Kicks it out. Quigley down the lane. Another two for Jeremiah Quigley. Absolutely. Somerville is a very adept scorer. He's got a nice shooting touch. He's had some big games so far this year. A couple of 30-point games. I believe he even scored 40 one time this year. Nicholas Lewis, the All-American. That doesn't fall. Gets the rebound. Sable over to Lewis. Gonzaga swinging it around the perimeter. Sable with a deep three. Doesn't fall. And here come the Mustangs. Quigley. Quigley. Nice series of moves. Jeremiah Quigley having a ball game early. Yeah, if they're gonna if they're gonna switch off on that ball screen, he's gonna have a big on him. He's gonna have his way with a big. So they they've gotta Coach Turner's gonna have to adjust what he does off the high ball screen because McNamara's gonna run that all day. Sable over to Derek Dixon. That's off by the Eagles, and here come the Mustangs. Did we thought about it. Nice spin move by Jalen Collinswood. There's a foul on the floor. That was really nice footwork right there for him to spin and show the ball and, and then go back up and under without traveling. That was high skill level right there as he was, got rewarded with a foul call. These teams have identical records and the score is identical at 8-8 eight, eight early on here at Bishop McNamara High School. First Amendment sports loop holder and there with Clinton on the call. The last home game for Bishop McNamara. And that's a pinball out of bounds. It's gonna stay Bishop McNamara. McNamara had a little bit of trouble getting the ball in and their baseline out of bounds play there. But both teams are so well coached and prepared. I'm sure that they've scouted all of these plays. Ball screen action again. Quigley, no fear at all for Jeremiah Quigley. That's gonna be the story this afternoon. How do you stop Jeremiah Quigley? Heavy dose of number three early in this first quarter. Gonzaga driving. 
Ice cold for Gonzaga. Here come the Mustangs. Driving the Mustangs. Doesn't go. Here come the Eagles. Sable. Very sloppy basketball early on here at Bishop McNamara. Both teams trying to settle in. Turner is upset about that. Yeah. He is heated over there on that sideline. You do Somerville not want to start the game off with multiple turnovers. Correct. Somerville with an ill-advised basket. I mean, that's not really, I don't think, what Coach Keithline, uh, Marty Keithline wants is a, 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 a long three like that. You know, when a, a tightly contested game. I'm sure he wants to work his offense. Everything getting ready for next week. You want to start running stuff. Yes, you've got to run your stuff. Run your stuff. It's a possession by possession game. And that's, and that's what coaches call empty possessions. When you get a quick rush shot like that, like you said, Lou, that is not what you want early on here. And you're that trying, to, you're trying to set the tone and run your stuff. That was dunked by... Jalen Collinsworth. Foul on the floor. Into the game. Look at that dunk by Jalen Collinsworth. Showing off his bounce right there. Yeah. Sable behind the back. That doesn't go. Here comes McNamara. Collinsworth. Over to Quigley. Quigley knifing through again. Jeremiah Quigley having a ball game. That senior is going to put his stamp on senior day. Absolutely. I know Marty <laughs> Keithline wishes every game was senior day for, <laughs> for his senior point guard. Yeah. Turnover from Bishop, from Bishop McNamara. Let's take another look at Jeremiah Quigley. He's very, very adept of knifing through the defense using his left hand. He, he's equally as strong going both directions. That's something that I'm sure the next level is waiting on him anxiously. Uh -huh. Martin Somerville starting the possession for the Mustangs. Prince Alex Moody, the freshman number two, has just checked into the game. He has had a very, very strong freshman campaign for the Mustangs. Early on when Quigley was injured, he got a, he got a few starts and, and stepped up to the plate and played well. He's been playing well all season long. They are very high on his potential. Again, Bishop McNamara's won three out of their last four. Um, they, the last time out, they lost to St. John's, 75-67, but they've been rolling a little bit uh, going into, and you want to play your best basketball going into the tournament. Jack Caden has just checked into the game for Gonzaga as he feeds Thomas Batiste in the post. He's a senior for the Purple Eagles. Bishop McNamara up 14-10. That's a turnover by the Mustangs. As, as has the sophomore Will Harper checked into the game. He just had a buzzer beater uh, in their last home game over there in that deep corner. That was a huge shot, biggest shot of his career so far down on I Street. Nicholas Lewis, long ball. And here comes Jeremiah Quigley. Inspired, oh. What they call a carry there? I think so. It's a nice looking crossover. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know about that call right there, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd doesn't like it either. No. Uh -uh. Nicholas Lewis for Gonzaga initiating the offense. Back in Lewis's hands. Looks like Gonzaga's trying to figure this zone out. Figured out there. Having a hard time yeah. finding lanes, passing lanes and driving Chase, lanes. Chase Lawton gives it up to Prince Moody. That doesn't fall. And here come the Eagles. 14 10. 
Winding down the first quarter of play here at Bishop McNamara High School on First Amendment Sports. Saber over to Lewis. They got a hurry. Doesn't fall. Looks like McNamara is trying to push the tempo yeah. on, mid, on missed shots. They're pushing the ball down their, down their chest. Yep. You don't want to foul that late in the quarter like that. You want to just get it, get in front of the ball handler and wall up. Yeah. That was a cheap foul with one and a half seconds left in the quarter. Martin Somerville makes the first. He's going to have another. Somerville's got a nice shooting stroke, Lou, uh -huh. as you can see as he shoots these free throws. Yeah. He's had multiple games with many three-pointers. Mm -hmm. And that's two for some of it. And a steal by Bishop McNamara. It's going to stay Gonzaga possession. Not going to be able to get it off. Doesn't go. At the end of one, it's 16-10. Bishop McNamara over Gonzaga. What are you, your thoughts on the first quarter? Well, McNamara did. Uh, first, let's go to best loan choice shops, hundreds of mortgage rates to find you the best loan. Visit them on bestloanchoice.com and find out what you qualify for, what you can save. Also, make sure to see if they can advise you on down payment assistance if you are a first time buyer. BestLoanChoice.com. And um, your thoughts on the first quarter? Well, McNamara did a really good job of neutralizing Nick Lewis coming into the game. I'm sure he's on the top of their scouting report because he is their go-to guy. And he hasn't uh, gotten loose yet. And that's a really, really good job of McNamara switching up defenses and making sure they keep their eye on where he is. Um, Ryan Sable hasn't been able, and Derek Dickinson as well, Dixon haven't been able to get on track from the outside. So really good job defensively for McNamara. And um, Gonzaga, they've got to control quickly. He's, he's, been the, he's been the story thus far. They've got to maybe trap him, double team him, blitz him on some of these ball screens, but they've got to switch something up. And I'm sure Coach Turner talked about that during the timeout. Oh, nice series of moves by Thomas Matisse. And here comes Prince Moody. Giving you a little taste of what the Ivy League is, is <laughs> going to see next year from that young man. Yeah. Somerville, you said he had a nice stroke. Wow, Moody. Very nice by Moody. Athletic freshman. He's going to be all over the place as his twin sister on the on the girls' side yes. for McNamara. Saw her last night playing the game. Nice work. Somerville. As you can see, he is not shy. No, Martin Somerville. Somerville and Quigley have been the story so far for Bishop McNamara. She said after the senior stuff, both coaches are now starting to settle in with their, you know, bread and butter, the normal rotation. Yes, yes, yes. And the Gonzaga. Lewis. Very nice set of moves by Lewis. Gets his own rebound. Great defense by Bishop McNamara. And here come a stampede of Mustangs. Thought about it. Chase Lawton doesn't go. There's a lot of contact right there, yeah. Lou. It was a no call. Yeah. Ref's kind of letting him play. Uh, yeah, if you let Derek Dixon set his feet, you can count that. It's a wrap. 2015, Bishop McNamara over Gonzaga, Somerville. Let's go, let's go. 
Sable over to Lewis. Sable tumbles. There's Dixon. Dixon's got the rot. Dixon. That three doesn't fall. And here comes Bishop McNamara. Moody. Moody doesn't play like a freshman, Lou. Yeah. No, he As we doesn't. see that a season no, he vet. Doesn't. He's playing like a season <laughs> vet, upperclassman, whatever you want to call it. Moody yeah. is ready for the moment. Yeah. 24 15, Bishop McNamara over Gonzaga, second quarter here at the campus, the Forestville campus of Bishop McNamara. That shot does not fall, there's a foul on the floor. Let's take another look at Moody. A freshman, but not playing like one. Poise, step through, use of the offhand. Could have got an M one right there, too. True. i tell you something, Lou. On that last possession, the referee called a foul before Nick Lewis got that ball over to Ryan Sable in the corner, and he hit a shot, he hit a three, nothing but net. Let's see if that is, is able to get him off and knock the, knock the lid off the basket for Sable, because he, he's important to what they do offensively. Um, Gonzaga just scored, and here comes Bishop McNamara back. Somerville and Quigley. Batiste did a good job of moving his feet and staying in front of the quick Somerville. Yeah. Uh, tried the alley-oop, didn't work. Very athletic, both oh. teams very athletic. I'm sure Tommy Amaker and his staff are very pleased with the way that Thomas Batiste moves his feet out on the perimeter. Yeah. A lot of the game is, is ball screen, pick and roll, yeah. and they like their big guys to be able to contain guards. Yeah. Lewis, only a sophomore. Ah, that's a nice looking basket by Alex Tuomo. That was a big shot by Tuomo. Turned a se seven point lead down to a four point lead and caused Marty to call a timely timeout, yeah. you know? It's a luxury when your big guys can step out to the perimeter and knock those threes down. Absolutely, you know. That's you hard think, to defend. You think about how the game has changed from Dirk and so many tall, you know. Um, so many tall guys now can just step out and be so fluent in yes. three-point range. The whole game has changed. Jokic, you know. Kevin Durant. Yeah. You know, a lot of these guys. And it's, and it's trickling down to the young players. You know, you back in the day when you, when you were tall as a youngster, they put you inside yeah. until you play close to the basket. <laughs> but the, bas the game of basketball has changed so much and becoming kind of positionless. You know, you, you, if you're – if you win the DNA lottery and can, and, and can be a tall young man, uh, you know, you still practice your guard skills and you can see it on in, in display right. here. All right, Mustang, and again, you know, from Kareem and all those guys who stood in the middle with sky hooks and everything like now, you know, it's just a totally different game. Totally different. And it's trickled all the way down to these levels that, you know, you see these big guys stepping out. I don't think I've seen a traditional big in a long, long time. Exactly. You know, just at the they're Mar like dinosaurs. Just at the Maryland Purdue game, and they're 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 all American. You know, Zach Eady. Yeah, he can play. He can you know fill it up too. So Lewis, that doesn't fall. Quigley, Somerville, Somerville, that doesn't fall, but he's fouled, which is why it probably didn't fall. You do not want to foul a three-point shooter. I know Ryan Sable was anxious to get a hand up out there. He's quickly set him up for in-rhythm three, and he got him with the body. That's almost like, you know, when you sell out uh, in football to try to block the punt and you run into the kicker. You know, it's like the momentum just takes you in. There. Absolutely. But you got to be careful. I mean, you know. And good shooters know how to. If, if you're anywhere <laughs> close to them, Take a flop. dive. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you get three free throws for yeah, it. Yeah, they know how to flop. <laughs> it's, it is it is a uh, artistic game at some point. It is. 
As a shooter myself, I remember I used to have crafty ways to get to the free throw line. Yeah, I'm sure Especially if did. I have a chance to get three of them. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. So basically, so what you're telling me is you sold, you sold, you sold a couple calls. Oh, I did, I did. Let's go deep. Sable for Gonzaga. Trying, Nick Lewis wants it down low. And pops it back out. It doesn't fall for Gonzaga, and here comes Bishop McNamara. All right, Mustang. Somerville. Martin Somerville. I told you, Lou. I told you. From FedEx Field. It is heating up. My Lord. Marty Keithline loving it. Coach He's fired up over there. Absolutely. This is a grudge match. Both teams 22 and 6. Both teams vying for third place in the WCAC. Edipi with the rebound. Here comes Quigley. Quigley! Doesn't fall, and here comes Gonzaga. And Quick hands right there by Quigley. Yeah. I don't know if that was a foul. Let's see if they show the replay. Yeah. Oh, this is that offensive. Here it is. He might have gotten all ball yeah, right there, Lou. Might have. Might have. It's a fast-paced game. Let's cut the ref some slack. <laughs> I think the bigger thing is the shot selection on the other end that led to that. So again, you can be excited, but you also have to be in control because when you get to the tournament, you gotta keep your emotions in check. Right? Yes, and I don't you know do. if that's the three that Marty Keith line would have wanted from Quigley. Right? It was a it was a rhythm, momentum, heat check kind of three. Yeah. And that that's what can lead to a fast break on the other end. Correct. And now his careless basketball by Bishop McNamara's on the baseline, turn the ball over. And I know Marty lets his guys, you know, kind of play freely, but yeah. all he had to do was give give Quigley a little nod and say, ah. No, yeah. You don't want to give any momentum to the other team. Absolutely. And here we go. For Somerville, finds Quigley. And that's a foul. Telling these point guards they ain't scared. They ain't scared. <laughs> they are not scared. One thing about it, when you play defense that way, and, and you know, as the old saying, "Get my ball back." Yeah. You can, you can, you can live with a couple of questionable shots because they play so hard and they, they get the, they get the possession back. And when you have a potent backcourt like that, sometimes you got to let them let them loose a little bit. Let them loose. Let them loose. Nine-point lead. Let's see what Gonzaga does in this last two minutes and a half. This is a very important stretch going into the halftime break. Sable. Doesn't fall, and here comes Jeremiah Quigley. That one looked like it was online for Sable. He's got to get one to fall. He's getting some nice looks. He elevates high on his jump shot, too. Yeah. Quigley does a really good job of drawing fouls as well. Here comes Gonzaga. Two minutes left in this quarter. 31-22. And... Sable doesn't fall, and here comes Quigley. Under two minutes left here in the first half. Quigley. Again, initiated the contact like you were saying, you know, to get an extra. Very, very crafty. Yeah. Driving the ball to the basket. He moves the ball yeah. around also, like you said, steps into the defender, shields the basketball, able to get to the free throw line if he doesn't make the shot. 
or a possible and one opportunity. Yeah. I think that's the second foul on Sable. Gonzaga's going to have to watch that foul situation because these guards are getting in there, penetrating, and causing havoc. Does he make that one? Nick Lewis, series of moves. Nice strip by Somerville. Gotta like that by Somerville. Quick hands. You have to be careful when you're dribbling the basketball around these guys. They've got very, very quick hands on both sides of the ball. Gonzaga as well. It's an Illibai pass. Here comes Nick Lewis. Wow. Edopai with the foul there, got the body. As you can see, nothing easy. No. You've got breakaway layups, you got quick hands in there, you've got big guys walling up. Let's take another look at that. Everything is contested around the basket. Yeah. So that foul on Edopai or was that on Moody? They Either called way. it they called it on Moody. On Moody, okay. Nick Lewis. Only a sophomore. And as you said, already got McDonald's All-American talent all over him already. It'll be fun to watch him for the next two years. It's a turnover by Bishop McNamara. Gonzaga giving, him, giving McNamara a little taste of their own medicine right yeah. there with some pressure defense. Yeah, you think Steve Turner found something there? He's kind of finding something that he can use in the second half there. Make somebody else break the pressure. Yeah. Nick Lewis. Trying to put his stamp on this game. Nice series of moves. He stepped on the baseline. They caught an uh, offensive foul. Oh, they, offensive. Oh, yeah, maybe yeah. he hooked yeah. him. I, hooked I, him. I didn't see it there. Yeah, see if we can get another angle out of it, but maybe not. Okay. Quigley. Edelpai with the nice screen. Quigley! Doesn't go. Doesn't go. What a nice move yeah. right there. Stop and go, change of pace, <laughs> change of direction. Yeah. I got to come up with a name for that one. How about we call it the McClinton? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the D-Mac. <laughs> Moody trying to force a shot and one. That's nicely done. That is body impressive. Control. For a freshman. Impressive. <laughs> Like I said, Prince Alex, Alex Moody is a very impressive young man, a great player. I've had the opportunity to be around him a lot. He, he works out with my guy Ray Brewer. Okay. Stay the course training. So I've seen all these moves you're going to see. I, I've seen him up close and personal. Yeah, he Dixon is. With the, Dixon with the three. 34 26 as we wind down the first half of play here at Bishop McNamara High School. WCAC action on First Amendment sports. Quigley, mano y mano, at a pie with the screen. Quigley, Quigley knifing through, doesn't fall. At a pie on the glass, doesn't fall. Moody, doesn't fall. And that's how the first half ends, 34-26. Gonzaga escaped right there with a nice defensive stand. McNamara missed a few chippies. They got about five opportunities right there, right around two feet from the basket. As we go into the halftime with an eight-point lead.
At this time, we welcome to the floor to honor Exaria Johnson. <laughs> With her mother, Sakia, her father, Khalil, her brother, Nasir, and her boyfriend, Juan. She has been on the varsity team for two years and will be attending Coon State University where she will major in psychology and minor in sports management. Her favorite memory of that matter, during halftime, she's the cheerleaders for homecoming her freshman year. Thank you, Daria, for all you have done.
Welcome back to the campus of Bishop McNamara High School in Forestville, Maryland for this WCAC matchup on First Amendment Sports. Lou Holder and Darren McClinton with the call at halftime. It's 34-26 Bishop McNamara over Gonzaga. I want to thank a couple of people, a couple of sponsors for helping us get on the air best loan choice shops hundreds of mortgage rates to find your best loan visit them on bestloanchoice.com and find out what you qualify for and what you can save also make sure to see if they can advise you on down payment assistance if you are a first time buyer it's best loan choice certified title corporation it's nationwide transaction enterprise solutions protects what matters most to you and your family from cyber security to all to best practices they've got you covered for the home buying and selling process visit their website certifiedtitlecorp.com kyle sterling properties was founded in 2019 with the mission to inspire people in the bay communities and impact the next generation proudly serving the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. We help, they help people of all walks of life find their dream homes, sell a property, or invest in real estate market. KyleSterlingProperties.com to get started today. Second half of action underway. Bishop McNamara, Somerville with an errant throw, and that's not how Marty Keithline wanted to start the second half of play. Lou, I am sure that it, it is a chess match going on in both of those locker rooms at halftime. And like you said, that is not how you want to start the third quarter off. Each possession is going to be important, trying to gain momentum and set the tone here in the second half. Sable. Lewis. Dixon with a three that's in and out. And here come the Mustangs. Unlucky rim right there for Dixon in the corner. That looked like it was going in. Quigley, spin move. Almost got picked, but got more, got his possession back. Edipai coming out to set the screen. Somerville, that's a three. Martin Somerville. Very crafty by Quigley to get back control of that basketball and Find Somerville, his partner in crime, with his feet set over there on the wing. Sable doesn't fall. Lewis with the rebound. Ryan Sable's been unable to find the mark. They're going to give him another try. And Oh, the reverse action there, D. A lot of times for shooters, Lou, all it takes is to see one go in. That's smart play right there by Ryan Sable. Taking it to the basket as his three-pointers have not been falling. Quigley. Quigley over to Jalen Collins where it doesn't fall. And here comes Gonzaga. Breaks the press. Edipai bumps him. Nice effort by Edipai Sable. Over to Dixon. That doesn't fall. Had a... Gonzaga's had a few nice looks from the outside. Uncontested three-pointers that they usually make. Somerville, trap. Oh, nice pass to Edipai. <laughs> Edipai getting down. 39-28, Bishop McNamara over Gonzaga. That's our first chance to looking at the athleticism that Edipai brings to the table that they, the coaching staff is so high on as Ryan Sable hits Sable. one right there. Absolutely. You knew it was going to be a, you knew it was gonna be a matter of time before he got loose. Found his place on the floor. 39-31. Gonzaga creeping back up in this one. Only down eight. Quigley. Nice moves by Quigley. And a foul. As you can see right there again, Lou, Quigley... He goes to the basket and he challenges those bigs. So he throws his body into him and, and, and forces the referee to make a call. 
and he moves the basketball around a lot. So he doesn't give it the shot blocker an easy target to swipe down it. Quigley makes the first. And Quigley will have another. It's the third foul on Tuomo right there. I know Coach Turner and his staff are keeping an eye on the foul trouble. Yeah. You don't want to pick up your third this early in the third quarter. And I'm sure that's part of Marty Keith's line strategy to get them fouled, to get them in trouble. Because that's what's going to take to win that tournament, you know, to get, to, to get their other guys in foul trouble. Because they're all talented, but who's going to stay on the floor the longest? Right. That's where depth comes into play. Yeah. Teams that are deep. And Paul Six is a very, wow. very deep squad. And they, they have, like, two starting fives, so... Yeah. You know, it doesn't really work against them, but some of these other teams that like to go seven, eight yeah. deep, yeah. you get a couple of their main guys in foul trouble, and you can change the complexion of the ball game. Sloppiness by Bishop McNamara. Gonzaga, can they take advantage of it? And they do. Smart pass right there by Dixon. He could have taken that short little eight to 10 footer, but he got the ball inside to his big, who finishes, Daniel Holmes finishes strong at the rim. Unselfish play right there by Dixon. Marty's not happy. Questionable Crowd's call right there. That is not a popular call here. No, not at all. On Marlboro Pike. Not at all. 41-33, just approaching the four minute mark in the third quarter at Bishop McNamara High School. Lou Holder and Darren McClinton on the call for First Amendment brings you WCAC basketball. Gonzaga. This game kind of has a playoff kind of vibe, doesn't it, Lou? Absolutely. I'm happy to be here with you, brother. Holmes doesn't fall. Holmes again. Good hustle play. Doesn't fall. Daniel Holmes is not playing around. He is in, in putting his shoulder into the defender. He's trying to get as close as he can to that basketball, a high percentage shot. He is not playing with his man. Yeah. So, I mean, when you look at what you just talked about not playing, I mean, when they come in, Holmes, Tomu, I mean, that's the kind of big presence that you're going to need in the tournament. Absolutely. Right now, Right now, they have a height advantage, a size advantage on, on, on the inside against McNamara. So Prince Moody is going to have to play bigger than he use, normally does. Yeah. Here comes Bishop McNamara, up 41-34. Quigley and Somerville playing some catch together. Somerville finding Collinswood. Doesn't fall. Sable. Yeah. Looks like it looks like Ryan Sable's starting to get it going. Oh yeah, a couple of a couple of possessions for him. Quigley. Quigley doesn't fall. Gonzaga breaks out. Nice play by Moody. Head defense up by Moody. Play by Quigley. Moody. Too cute. Moody. Look at that athleticism. It's going the other way. Marty's going to have a conniption over here. Marty, keep, let's take another look at that, D. Oh. Man. I think he missed that call. Yeah. Knew it was coming, Lou. Yeah. Ryan Sable's got the hot hand now. He's got it going. Gonzaga. He's hit about four shots in a row. Gonzaga has creeped up in this, so we take a break here. And we're pleasure to be joined by the president of Bishop Back McNamara High School, Dr. John Barnhart, is joining us here on the program. Welcome, sir. Well, I appreciate it. It's good to be here. A wonderful game matchup we got this afternoon. Yeah, so Dr. Barnhart, you came in. A few years ago in the midst of a pandemic, 
and we didn't have any of this. We didn't have any, you know, closed gyms and senior nights and senior days were empty. Um, what's it like to, to now be the president of a school um, that has a full array of student life activities going on? It's got to make you feel kind of energized coming out here with your son and just enjoying a Saturday afternoon at Bishop McNamara. Absolutely. You know, this is what it's all about for our school, for our families and our, our community. Uh, we see the boys out on the court today, and, you know, they spent those three years uh, wondering what was up with, with COVID. And, uh, campus life has never been stronger than ever. Uh, applications, uh, were, uh, new admissions were released just this past Friday. Uh, the campus has a brand new science center that opened last week, 20,000 square feet. I mean, it's a really great time uh, to be a student at McNamara. And look at all the alum in the yeah. stands as well, people coming out. Uh, it's really great to be back. Yeah. Stay with us for a second, sir. Uh, Quigley. Quigley and Sable. So, Dr. Barnhart, you talked about that building. You can't help but notice it when you drive up the pike now. Beautiful facility, beautiful courtyard. I mean, how cool is it going to be for the students that are going to take advantage of that? Uh, I know it's been a long time coming for you. Absolutely. You know, the kids were, there we go. Kids were right in there. Uh, day one last week, uh, you know, Lorraine High School honoring uh, our, our sisterhood. Uh, Lorraine High School down the road, closed in the 90s. Uh, it's a really wonderful addition to campus. It's a commitment to STEM, preparing students for careers in STEM, uh, and, and really, you know, the crown jewel right here on Marlboro Pike. Yeah, and they got a broadcast. D, they got a broadcast lab in there. Darren, <laughs> they got a broadcast lab. So oh, they got, they're going to yeah, have nice. a studio. They got a green screen. They got uh, a control room. Man, I walked through there just the other day, just taking a peek. I was like, Impressive, this is a huh? high school. Right. A high school has stuff that colleges have. So, you know, it's great to see all these schools uh, do well. You know, at the end of the day, it's great to have the stellar athletics, a wonderful fine arts program, and we remain a really strong college prep high school. Yeah. And so it really takes that commitment to the STEM uh, and, and balancing it out with the arts and athletics. Yeah. The boys are looking great here today. Absolutely. Thanks so much for your time. Dr. John Barnhart, president of Bishop McNamara High School. So Dee's mentioned a lot of good things. Um, you know, a lot of presidents come in and they have everything going on. He came into an empty building. You know, a lot of stuff that he had to just figure it out because there were no students. No, whatever, and then now, you know, it's great. And yeah, it had to be interesting to to make that adjustment. Uh, you know, like he said, student life. Oh man, it's the heartbeat of the school. I mean, you know, you gotta have, you gotta. I mean, the the the, the what the stu the, what what the students do infuses the faculty. Like, when you come to the school, you want to see a vibrant, you know, thing. So to have kids at home and. Zooms and masks and everything like that. It was tough. It's tough. It was tough. And some 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 institutions still haven't rebounded. You know, some people are closing schools. Some schools had to close across the nation. This clearly doesn't make it. And here comes Gonzaga. Yeah. And Gonzaga. Nick Lewis has seemed to spark this team. Will Harper came in and hit a couple of shots while we were on break and uh gonzaga has gone out gotten out to a three-point lead yeah i kind of expected ebbs and flows of this game though you know so oh tempers are flaring yeah, over there we'll just keep it neutral here what happens on a senior day and two teams are tied for third place and heated rivalry absolutely bishop mcnamara lost the first outing gonzaga it's two and two in their last two last four outings and both of those losses came to st john's once at home and once on the road it wouldn't be a mcnamara gonzaga senior day game with a lot of without a little bit of chippiness though Correct. three point game and that's a foul right in front of us by Daniel Holmes and the Mac 
The McNamara players are running over to the scene. That you are not going to bang our point guard around, knock him around like that. Jake Carden guarding Somerville, and here comes Quigley. Our leader, our point guard. Quigley. Jeremiah Quigley, the senior, putting his stamp on this game. That's a veteran move right there. It was a questionable call over there. Tempers were flaring. They called, they called it the hedge over here on, on the big fella. And so what does he do? He takes it right to him. Referees are human, just like all of us. Yeah. He knows how to draw frowns. He's a crafty guy, man. Yeah. Jeremiah quickly and one. A three-point play. And we are tied. What a surprise. Two teams who are identical records are tied as we end ending down the third quarter. Lewis with a hop step doesn't fall. And that's how the third quarter is going to end. All tied at 46. No. We have a foul on the floor. No, it was a travel call. Travel. Prince okay. Moody thought the quarter was over. Okay. I wonder if they're going to put any more time back on the clock. Nothing can be done at 0 0.1. Let's see. Point three. Point three on the clock. Is that enough to do anything? Just a tip in. That's all you can do. Oh. Well, that might have counted, though. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I got to check the rule book. Yeah, at the end of three quarters of play, two teams who are 22 and six records are tied at 46 here at Bishop McNamara High School. And check out the pep band. Get it. Hey. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking about. All Still knotted up. 46-46. We didn't expect anything less, Lou. Absolutely. And I expect more back and forth in this last quarter. As both teams talk it over before the last stanza, what are you saying if you're if you're Gonzaga, and what are you saying if you're Marty Keithline over here at McNamara? So I mean, obviously both coaches are saying let's keep our emotions in check, you know, because um, one you know, silly come, foul technical come, come, can really let, swing let, the momentum. Let me tell you a story. I'm in the um, I grew up in the in the South Jersey Philadelphia area. Uh, one of the premier programs in the entire country, Camden High School, uh, with DJ Wagner, his it father Dewan, yes. and his father Milt, both three-time All uh, McDonald's All-Americans. They were playing Woodrow Wilson, that's called Camden Eastside. They had a fight, and the school district canceled the rest of the season. Absolutely, I heard so, about that. So, so, so they canceled the rest of the season. So now this highly talented player is not even going to get a chance to compete in the playoffs because the school district said, you're done, right? Absolutely. You don't want any of that stuff happening here. Um, so I think the first thing that the coaches say is, hey, look, let's get the emotions in check. I think Marty says, let's keep feeding Quigley. Quigley is, the, you know, as you told us, the straw that stirs the drink, right? And I think uh, Coach Turner is saying, hey, look, we found some, some pockets, some chinks in the armor you know, let's keep exploiting that. That's my educated opinion. So, you agree? Absolutely. Okay. It's it, these both of these coaches, both of these teams have been in this situation plenty of times. That's what you get night in and night out in the WCAC. You get hard-fought battles, and you get a lot of tension in the air. Yeah, they know how to handle it. Right. And speaking of, you know, that Camden High area. The Philadelphia area, you know, covering Rasheed Wallace and Richard Hamilton and Kobe Bryant and stuff like that. But it nothing compares to when I came down here. The just just the WCAC alone, right? You know, they had that um, documentary by Jimmy Jenkins called In the Water. Yes. And Quinn Cook gets up in there and says, My whole high school team was in the NBA. I mean <laughs> usually get one or two players, not the whole team. Absolutely. You know, so the stuff here is just next level. Jeremiah Quigley. The basketball that I have seen being here now 21 years in this market, 
as we see Quigley again. The 21 years in this market, the constant basketball that I have seen come out of this area, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Kevin Durant, you know, um, Jeremy Grant, all the Grant boys. Markel Fultz. Yeah. I'll tell you what. JQ is really boogieing right now. It's kind of it's what we say. He's got the remote control in his hand, yeah. and he is doing what he wants out here. Yeah. Will he Harper, I don't, I don't know how that shot went in. <laughs> he runs down with a smile on his face like he meant to do it. Yeah. He's a very skilled Jeremiah player Jeremiah well. quickly doesn't fall but gets the foul. I'll tell you what, Luke. JQ is going to make sure he has his fingerprints on every possession from here on out. Yeah. As he should. As a senior, I'm sure that uh, Coach Keith Line has said, hey, look, the keys are yours. Drive responsibly. Because <laughs> 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 what he doesn't want is for you to crash that car, right? And but everybody is, you else. Know, you you, you got to know that you got a tough stretch of games coming up and, um, you know, play smart. Right. 51-50, tight game, fourth quarter. Wouldn't want it any other way. This is where big time players step up, step up and make names for themselves or remind everybody about their name. They've already made names for themselves. Okay. Gonzaga trying to find a hole in that Bishop McNamara defense. Still trying to find a hole, nine on the shot clock. Long three, doesn't fall. Rebound with a push off. It's gonna be interesting, Lou, in this fourth quarter to see how these referees start to call this game. Are they gonna let the players play a little bit? Or are they gonna get real, real tactical in their, in their officiating? Thomas Batiste with the foul there. They're Sending, already in the bonus with yes. six and a half to go. Sending Collingswood to the line for a free throw. Gotta make your free throws. That doesn't fall, 51-50. Lewis, guarded by Chase Lawton. And that's gonna be interesting as well. Part of this chess match is knowing who to foul and when to foul. Guys better make Man. their free throws. Oh, try to hook them. Called for that. It's two turnovers on two possessions for Gonzaga. And two fouls on Batiste. Back to back. Gotta watch that. Somerville, Quigley. Quigley. Nicely done by Jeremiah Quigley. You see the patience and poise as he hung in the air, waited for his defender to drop. Soft touch right over the top of the rim. Sable, and a turnover. All right. Quigley, Moody! My goodness! A timeout by Steve Turner. It's a textbook fast break right there. Yeah, that's nice it. bounce pass to the streaking Moody, and he finishes strong at the rim. That is what you call a stampede of Mustangs. Moody knows when his point guard has the ball, all he has to do is sprint, and he will reward him. Yeah. Usually it's Prince Moody making the steal. Gotcha, yeah. Again, as Dr. Barnhart said, a packed house. You can see it in the images that we're showing you. This place is full. Not an open seat to sit down in the Bishop McNamara campus gym. I'll tell you what, you know what's impressive? Today, all around the area, there are many uh, conference championships going on. And to see a regular season game, standing room only like it is today, it, it just shows you how competitive and how high the energy is here in the, in, in the WCAC. Yeah, there you go, there's the standing room only right there. People standing can't get a seat. You literally cannot get a seat to sit down in this place. The band is rocking. Yeah, atmosphere is rocking. Thank you so much to Bishop McNamara for having us on campus, the First Amendment Sports 
It's always the first class accommodations yeah. when we come here. Did the, did the women's game, the girls' game yesterday? Didn't K disappoint. Caden Samuels going to Maddie UConn. McDaniels. Maddie McDaniels. That he, she might be the best he's had. You know, when it's My all goodness. said and done. She is the truth. Yeah. So. But Frank Oliver's done a tremendous job. Five it's straight a, yeah. years of 20 plus wins. I mean, it's just a man, a man, tremendous what he's been able to do. Um, Dr. Dr. Barnhart was talking about all the, you know, the great stuff going on here. So many people like you know, Mike Anderson and people that are in the business that are giving back to the school. And uh, it's just great when we give back to the, to the, to the students. When uh, you and I also give back our talents to students who want it. So, I mean, that's what it's all about, you know, us giving back. And see these all these kids when they're announcing where they're going to school and sports management and law and everything like that. It's just a great time, great time. It's beautiful to see. You know, these these high schools do a great job of preparing these young men and young women to, to be positive citizens in, in, in society and not just uh, excelling on the, on the athletic playing field or the court, but they're also striving in the classroom and striving socially. Yeah. You know, and it, it's a beautiful thing to see these, these uh, young men and women go off to, to you know, bigger and better places. Yeah. All being prepared by these fine high schools. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Lewis at the line uh, makes his first free throw. And Dr. Barnhart has to be proud, as as do the other, the presidents of all of these schools. They 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 when they see the fruits of their labor and their staff preparing these preparing these kids to. Uh, yeah. And giving them all the tools they need yeah. to step out in the world and, 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 and be positive. Here, Bishop McNamara talk about the hope to give. Hope to give. Moody. Moody doesn't fall. That would have brought the house down. It would. And it was. I was lined up in coaching staff telling them to calm down a little bit. I like that shot in rhythm. Yeah. But I was a shooter, so. <laughs> <laughs> Are you one of those people who didn't see a shot you didn't like? Uh, absolutely. My coach would always <laughs> say, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Bishop McNamara up three in this final quarter. Oh, nice series of moves. Chase Lawton doesn't fall. Wow, gets it back. Somerville, yeah. Martin Somerville. That's an example right there, Lou. Of you, you may not like that shot, but he's a rhythm shooter and he's and he gets hot. And that's a really big momentum shot right there for his squad. Somerville knocked it down. McNamara up six. Quigley, Collinswood, way off. Look at Chase Lawton. Collins with banging the boards. Lou, Let's take I another just, look at this. Let's take another look at this. Look at the just banging the boards. He backs up into a nice tray ball. He knew it was good when it left his fingers. I just checked my cheat sheet, Lou. And Jalen Collingwood is a freshman. Yeah. This guy is so athletic. As you can see, he skies above the rim for about three or four different uh, offensive rebounds. Let's get to our sponsor. Certified Title Corporation. Transaction Enterprise Solutions protects what matters most to you and your family. From cybersecurity to Ulta best practices, they've got you covered from the home buying and selling processes. Visit their website, CertifiedTitleCorp.com. And Kyle Sterling Properties, founded in 2019, with the mission to inspire people, innovate communities, and impact the next generation, proudly serving the DC, Maryland, Virginia areas with help. We help people, they help people of all walks of life find their dream home, sell a property, or invest in the real estate market. Visit KyleSterlingProperties.com and get started with them today. Shout out to our sponsors, making it, facilitating the, the, the opportunity for us to get here and bring this broadcast to the people. 
McNamara up six. Just under four minutes in this game. Quigley falls. That's going to be a jump ball. We got the barn burner that we thought we were going to get. Absolutely. Jump ball, possession stays with the Mustangs. As you can see, Quigley is barking to his teammates and teaching them, telling them where he wants them to go, give, give him a little bit of a release. Summerfield. Felt that. Here comes Gonzaga down six. Haven't heard Holmes. Dixon's name that much. Holmes. Right on cue as he makes a nice dish to the big fella diving down the middle. And Turner, Coach Steve Turner calls a timeout. Let's take another look at that. A lot of people don't understand why coaches call timeouts after they score. And it's a great opportunity for you to set your defense up and you can't take the timeouts home with you, so you better use them all and use them in a timely manner. Constantly teaching on both ends. As impressive as the players are on the court, the WCAC is, is, is a fine of coaching staffs that you, you're going to see all over the country. Absolutely. Man, this pep band is getting it. We see you, ladies. We see you. Absolutely. Four point game. Tight run. Bishop McNamara. Again, Gonzaga. See, Gonzaga won the comes one. out in the trap. Moody. He wanted all that, but got an offensive foul instead. And Gonzaga beat Bishop McNamara 75 40 on January 10th. I repeat, 75-40 on January 10th. There's not going to be that wide array of point differential today. Now, as I noted before, you, call, you score a basket, you call a timeout, you set up your pressure, you speed McNamara up, you get an offensive foul here, you come down, you get another bucket. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it's a two-point game. Absolutely, Derek Dixon. That bucket. Quigley. Can't say enough about Coach Steve Turner. Yeah. 24th year with Gonzaga, 19th as the head coach, four WCAC titles, Washington Post, all met coach of the year during his tenure, a national Gatorade coach of the year during his tenure. The man can just coach. Marty Keithline, not bad himself. After going all the way to the WCAC final, has a 22 and six staff uh, uh, roster this year. And again, got freshmen flying all over the place in Collinswood. We got Somerville back next year. Um, Prince just a, Moody just getting started. Yeah, I mean, it's just. The future's bright. Basically, they're just not going to. Um, they're going to just reload. Yeah, you, you know. plug and play in yeah. this area. Yeah. So Maybe a little blood on the hand or. Find out what the uh, call is going to be there. All is well. He's back into the game. All right. Sable. The rock of the inbound. Lewis. Lewis has been kind of quiet. He has. He had a little spurt right there in the third quarter. Thought we were going to see a heavy dose of what he's capable of doing. Dixon. But McNamara has done a really good job of, of holding to their scouting report and keeping them cold. Somerville with a great big rebound. All right, McNamara, let's go. Quigley. Every possession crucial now. This is where you want to use a lot of the shot clock. Don't force up anything. It's good poise by the freshman right there. Yeah, nine on the shot clock. 
There's that turnover that stays here. We'll go back to what you just said, poised by that freshman. Coach Keithline has two freshmen in the game right now at a crucial part of this contest. And, and, and two minutes to go, and you're riding with two freshmen. That's showing that you have ultimate confidence and trust in your young fellas. And rightfully so. They've been producing for you all year long. Yeah. Quigley. Quigley. Nice pop by Jeremiah Quigley. Gonzaga. That's it. Walk. And how difficult is it just, it's a simple game plan. Get the ball to your soldier, let him go to work. Yeah, let's take another look at that quickly. What'd you see there? Mid-range. It's a lost part of today's basketball, that mid-range shot, and that is money. A lot of people don't teach it anymore. 63-58, under two minutes left in this ball game. Bishop McNamara trying to head to the WCAC on a high note. They've won three of their last four, only lost to St. John's their last time out in that streak. Oh. There's the freshman. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm very impressed with the freshman, Jalen Collingwood. Him handling that pressure out on the perimeter, as well as crashing the boards and getting a nice putback. Bishop McNamara, under a minute left, up 65-58. Foul. Going, going back crowd's to, starting to smell victory now. Going back to Collingswood. It's body control. You teach your athletes, don't give up on the play. I know he's seen the ball go in for JQ all afternoon, but he stayed following that ball and following the basket, and he got a really nice athletic putback. It's what you want to see from your young guys. Energy and poise at the same time. Energy and poise. And this is going to be, it's another thing that's going to be crucial down these games to make your free throw. McNamara is in the double bonus, and Gonzaga still has only four fouls right now, so. <coughs> Dixon doesn't fall. Lewis, Sable, that's the three that they were looking for. Big shot right there by Ryan Sable. Now, what, Lou, what offensive rebounds do for a team is gives them a second chance opportunity, but it also gives your shooters a chance to set their feet and point their toes to the basket. That's the easiest shot in basketball. So Nick Lewis goes up there with an athletic play and grabs the offensive rebound over the towers and kicks it back out to his buddy Ryan Sable, who's lock loaded and ready. Look at the energy in the building. Please. Look at the energy Can in the building. Can we get a shot of this pet man, please? There we go. Look. <laughs> That's a teacher there. He That's does a great the, job. That's one of the teachers that fish back to there. Love it. Hey. That's the energy you're looking for. 66, 61, and Zaga down five. Bodies on the floor. Now you gotta like that. Now I am going to point out and give some praise to Martin Somerville because 
you know, you let your body out, get that ball because you want it. You want the win. You want to send these seniors out right. Um, that's the hustle play that you can't teach that. You rather have it or you don't. Yeah, you 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 sell out for your squad. That's that's called. Not a lot of people nowadays would dive on the floor like that, worried about a concussion or worried about injury. Wow. We've got a one possession game, Lou. One possession game. Just like that. Steve Turner knows how to coach. So this is as much about the players as as much about the coaches and the chess pieces and the chess game that is being played between Keith Line and Turner. Gonzaga has pressed very little throughout the first three quarters of the game. And, and now in, in a crucial moment, I call it the butter popcorn time of the game, <laughs> you know, they, they pull out their press and, and change defenses on and see how McNamara adjusts. It's, it's resulted in a couple of turnovers and easy baskets for uh, Gonzaga, and they've closed this gap. Again, great atmosphere at Bishop McNamara High School, going down to the wire, and we, what would you expect from two 22 and 16s? Three points decided. Quick foul by Gonzaga. Sending Chase Lawton to the line, and again, it comes down to this crucial time in games, especially getting ready for the tournament, You've got to make your free throws. Chase Lawton, the 6'2 senior guard out of Clinton, Maryland, is stepping up for two of the most important free throws in his high school career. Yeah. There's one. Piece of cake. This is the second. Here comes Gonzaga. Nick Lewis. Let's go, D. I don't think you really needed the foul there. I don't think you really needed the foul there. I mean, you're up four. I mean, I don't think you really needed the foul there. Now time has stopped. Yes. Right? You know, so. Now, if you're Gonzaga, you do you want exactly what Nick Lewis was able to do right there. He's crafty, yeah. able to draw fouls. That's what JQ has been doing all night long for the other on the other side of the floor but Nick was able to get to that free throw line stop the clock and move the scoreboard in his favor yeah. without wasting any time yeah so that's one that's one um, that's puzzling to me why you would even foul there the highly touted sophomore now makes it a one possession game again. Somerville, Quigley. Quigley. Get the ball to your senior leader and in the middle of the foul. floor. Way to draw it up, Marty Keithline. He, he takes his point guard and puts him in the middle to where once you break that initial trap and get the ball to your soldier, he knows what to do with it. Both coaches, Both coaches get a chance to steal a timeout right here because we have uh, Will Harper that has just fouled out. So you get an extra timeout, so to speak, while we wait on the substitution. Who's going to take come check into the game for Will Harper? And I wouldn't be surprised if you. If you're Steve Turner and you have a guy with four fouls in, tell him to be the one to foul. It gives you an extra timeout. It's clever. These guys. I know you don't want to lose them on the other end of the floor, but if you can sneak a timeout in and ice the free throw shooter a little bit as that one rolls in. Quigley's got ice water in his veins, though. Jeremiah Quigley makes both. McNamara up four. <laughs> it's 
Steve Turner not happy with that call. That is a huge call right there. Off the ball, and that fouls Ryan Sable out. As the referee checks the scorebook to see if that is five on Sable, Steve Turner's it. Able to steal another timeout, talk it over with his troops. Well, you see Steve Turner talking it up with his Eagles. Mikey Williams, the 6'2 junior, checks in for Sable. When your number is called, you got to be ready. Moody, and Moody's fouled. Prince Alex Moody steps up to the line for two very important free throws of his young promising career. The first one is good by Prince Moody. Five point game. Nothing but the bottom. These are the kind of situations where young players really, really grow up. Some miss there, Gonzaga. Quickly doesn't foul him. No need to foul. And that's your ball game. That shot does not fall. 70. Oh, they're going to give it to him. Two point victory. Two point victory. I don't know if he got that shot off, though. But they're going to give it to him. 70 68 is your final. An unbelievable broadcast and an unbelievable experience here at Bishop McNamara High School. For Darren McClinton, I'm Lou Holder. Thanks for watching First Amendment Sports. 70-68 is your final.